Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, words my brethren all around the world watching this video. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day, a fantastic week. Um, as for myself, you know, I've been out of commission for like the last three or four days. I was very sick this past week, and I, we're, we're talking about like so sick that I could barely stand up. I was so dizzy. Uh, I threw up a lot, threw, about, threw, threw up about five or six times this weekend. So had a pretty rough week. On top of that, the, the, those, those sorry-ass Carolina Panthers lost to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, so they, they did their normal choke job in the playoffs. And then, um, you know, Everton did their normal choke job against Liverpool. So uh, it's what it is. Just another, another another typical week in my life. But um, anyway, wanted to do, to do this video on some boxing talk. Wanted to do this video for my, my main man, David um, Sinez, or I don't know how to say his last name, but David. He commented on one of my Charlo videos about two months ago, and he asked me to do a, a, a video about my top 10 favorite boxers right now and my top 10 favorite boxers all time. So this video right here will actually be my top 10 favorite boxers of all time. Um, and I'm not going to go in order. I'll just give you guys... Um, you know, who's on the list and why they're there. And as uh, also my honorable mention as well. So we'll start with my, with, with my honorable mention. Some guys, the guys that made my honorable mention are as follows um, for my favorite boxers of all time. Uh, you got Iran the Blade Barkley, Tony Bellew, Vasil Lomachenko, James Lights Out Tony, and Timothy Bradley. These all these guys all could have easily made my top 10, but uh, some guys are a little bit higher on my list for some of my reasons. But, you know, Iron Barkley, we'll start with him. A guy that was, uh, you know, fought all comers, not the most skilled fighter in the world, but was a true warrior of the sport, didn't duck nobody, uh, was willing to take on the best, and some of the top guys even ducked him. So, uh, got to respect Iron Barkley. Uh, Tony Bellew, another guy who wasn't the most skilled in the world, uh, but Tony Bellew uh, was able to, you know, overachieve. He's probably the biggest overachiever in boxing today, and he's uh, parlayed his career into becoming a, one of the biggest box office boxing stars in the UK. So, a big shout out to him. And he's a fellow. Evertonian, so we, 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 me and Bellew also both share love for Everton Football Club, which uh, can't really say for any other top level boxer, so got, got to support him on that. Uh, Lomachenko, obviously, fantastic fighter, uh, one of the funnest fighters in boxing to watch, one of the most accomplished fighters in boxing, he won 11 fights, and um, as far as I'm concerned, the best fighter in the sport. Um, so yeah, he's there. Uh, James Lights Out Tony, uh, this is a guy that I remember when I, when I, when I first started boxing. Um, this is a guy that I used to study a lot. I used to want to counter punch like him, learn learn his shoulder roll, learn how to parry punches, learn how to be a defensive fighter like him. So I like James Tony a lot. And then Timothy Bradley, um, just an another guy, man, no nonsense fighter, fought the best, and um, didn't have the again another guy who wasn't the most skilled fighter in the world, but just he knew how to get the job done. So big big fan of Timothy Bradley. So that's my honorable mention. My top ten. Um, well, here we go. So we have Sergey Kovalev, you know, big, big Sergey Kovalev fan, as you guys know. Um, you know, I was gutted when he didn't when he was in the wrong end, of the, wrong end of the first fight with Ward, and even more pissed off when I got to witness him get uh, prematurely stopped in the second fight live and in person. So uh, there's that. But I think he's a great fighter, tremendous fighter, still a man of light heavyweight, um, tremendous jab, great boxing skills. Tremendous ability to finish fighters for the most part. And uh, in my opinion, humble, my humble opinion, one of the top 25 best light heavyweights to ever live. So Kovalev, no doubt, um, number you know on my list. Uh, then you got Larry Holmes, the Eastern Assassin. You know, had one of the longest title reigns in uh, heavyweight title reigns in boxing history. In my opinion, has the best jab in the history in the history of heavyweight boxing. Um, don't think he don't think he really gets the credit he deserves, man. I think um, in a world where and this is no disrespect to Ali because I'm a huge Ali fan as well. Um, in a world where Ali isn't this transcendent, uh, iconic figure that transcends boxing, like I think, I think there, it, it's a lot easier to have the discussion of Larry Holmes skill for skill being better than Muhammad Ali. I know, I know a lot of people that might sound crazy, but I think he has legitimate claim as best heavyweight of all time, and he never, he, he never, ever, ever, ever gets the 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 recognition or the respect that he truly deserves. In my opinion, I think he's in the discussion for best heavyweight of all time. Top three, in my opinion, no doubt about it, Larry Holmes. Uh, Muhammad Ali, also another one, one, one of my top ten favorite fighters. Uh, obviously, you know, it goes without saying what he's done, what he, what he did for boxing, um, the fights he had with Foreman, the fights we had with Joe Frazier, the fights he had with just, you know, the list goes on and on. Ken Norton, 
um, just everybody up and down the list. Joel, you know, Ali, man, especially especially being someone from South Florida who I've gone to the Fifth Street Gym. Obviously, it's not the original location, but I've gone to the Fifth Street Gym. I've gotten to talk to a lot of people that either uh, spa, you know, coached him, sparred with him, were around him. So I, I almost feel like I knew Ali. And it, when he died, it was almost like I lost a, a distant, you know, relative. So, uh, yeah, Ali definitely on my list, great fighter. Um, next guy is Bernard Hopkins, which might surprise many people but that Bernard Hopkins is one, one, one of my favorite fighters. But Bernard Hopkins is one of my favorite fighters because uh, he was he took part in the first boxing match that I ever watched as a kid. The first boxing match that I ever watched as a kid was Felix Trinidad versus Bernard Hopkins. And um, uh, Bernard won that fight. And uh, I was a fan of, from, from that point forward, you know. So uh, Bernard, you know, it was, which is funny that it's funny because he has a, a, a style similar to guys that I don't like. So the irony of me, Bernard Hawkins being one of my favorite fighters is that if I would have sort of, if I would have, if you, if you, if you, if he was fighting right now, I probably, would, I probably wouldn't like Bernard Hawkins. But because I didn't know anything when I was a kid, you know, he's, he's one of my favorite fighters because he's in the first boxing match I ever watched. I didn't know what the hell I was watching. Um, then you have Adrian Granados, you know, Adrian Granados, another one, uh, one of my top 10 favorite fighters because of the fact that I would say, one, we have a really good a relationship, you know, a friendship. Uh, I talk to him regularly. Um, so that, that's number one, sentimentally, you know, definitely my top 10. But aside from that, you know, in the ring, not the most skilled fighter in the world, but a man that is willing to take on all comers, has given pretty much everybody on, the, on his resume with the exception of maybe Sean Porter, depending on how you look at that fight. Um He's giving everybody on his resume uh, a good account of himself and um, probably deserves more respect than he gets in boxing. Um, and and, and he's, one of, he's, he's probably the best example we can give in boxing of a guy that is a lot better than – is is better than his record would indicate. So um, the fact that he's willing to take on the best, um, you know, and it's came out the way he came up, you know, I, I respect him a lot. So Adrian Granado is uh, definitely in my top ten. Uh, Michael Nunn, uh, another one, another guy, man. If there, if there was one guy in the world that I could box like, like no, no, no doubt about it. If there's one guy in the world, like, cause I, I'm back in the gym, I'm training here and there. If there's one guy in the world that I could box just like, I would want to box like Michael Nunn. He was just, just so smooth with, 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 with as, as a southpaw. He had that smooth southpaw jab. He knew how to move around the ring. He knew how he just knows how to do so much in the ring. So, uh, Michael Nunn just uh, the epitome is smooth, and he was a dominant, he was a dominant uh, middleweight in his time when he was. Destroying the likes of Frank Tate and uh, Colin Bay, and you know, he had a fight with James Tony where he obviously lost. But dangerous, dangerous fighter, and one of the smoothest cats that are put on, put on a pair of boxing gloves, bar none. So yeah, that's Michael Nunn. Uh, then you got Manny Pacquiao. Obviously, I grew up a big, big Manny Pacquiao fan. Um, I'll never forget like my pops and my uncle when I was living when I was living in New Hampshire at the time because I used, I, lived, I lived in New Hampshire for a very brief period of my life. Um, Remember, my uncle and my dad would argue about who to win for months between Pacquiao and Cotto. And um, I wanted Pacquiao to win, man. And I was so happy when Pacquiao beat his ass. I was, I was, I was, I was a big Pacquiao fan. And then he had the fights of Margarito and, 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 you know, Marquez fights. And he had, uh, you know, his, that dead fight with Floyd. But regardless of the fact, Manny Pacquiao, one of the best talents I've witnessed in any sport, let alone boxing. So um, just to see his magical run um, coming up as a kid was truly something to behold. And, I'll never forget it for as long as I live. And yeah, Manny Pacquiao, one of the best pound for pound fighters to ever compete in the sport of boxing. Simple as that. Uh, next fighter we got is our Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Rick, Riddick Bo, man, like this is a guy he, that before I even before I even know before I even knew Riddick Bo, like before I even knew got to know him at all or interview him. Like when I, when I was when I was going to when I was going to Canino's boxing gym and learning how to box, um, this is actually a guy that I studied very uh, intensely. Um, his style, um, just being as big as he was, to be as smooth as he was, to be as, as as fluid of a combination puncher he was at that size. You know, I studied his style a lot, and uh, he's one of my one of my favorite fighters. You know, I think uh, he was probably one of the biggest underachievers in boxing history, and he probably could have he he should have had a better career than he did. But regardless of the fact, he's still left boxing as a part of the greatest heavyweight trilogy since. Um, Ali Frazier, and that's no small accomplishment. Uh, Riddick Bo, undisputed heavyweight champion, gets disrespected because of what happened with Lennox Lewis situation, but still a great fighter in his day and in his prime, one of the best heavyweights that ever was. Um, so there's that. Then you got Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Evander, um, 
another guy who I've had a chance to, just just like Ray, I've had a chance to interview um a lot of times um with Evander Holyfield man like just to see his run from cruiserweight to heavyweight for him to go undisputed in the two weight classes the guy is the epitome of a true champion in boxing and um I've had a chance to get to know him a little bit and uh, he's an even better guy outside the ring so the fact that he could be as great as he was in the ring but just be as humble as he's outside the ring I think that's a that's a great life lesson and a great example you could look at uh, in life to keep your head on head on straight and your feet on the ground so uh big fan of Evander Holyfield and obviously my favorite fighter of all time it should come as no surprise to you guys is the real TBE Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez um as you guys know Roman Gonzalez is my favorite fighter of all time uh he's been a guy that um been the, I, I love I love watching I love all, I love all his fights I love his style I love his approach to boxing I love the fact that he's been willing to take on all comers you know I was there the, I was there the night live in the flesh I was there the night he fought Carlos Cuadras at, at, at the forum, September 10, 2016. I'll never forget it. Um, one of the most electric atmospheres you will ever experience in your, in your life was that night at the forum. And it was quite magical when he when he made history becoming the first Nicaraguan fighter to win a world title in four weight classes. So dude's a living legend. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the only active fighters, handful of active fighters who is an all-time great in the sport. And um, that's just what it is, man. So uh, Roman Gonzalez is a true champion. So, yeah, for those, so, so we'll, we'll, I'll run through it again for those of you who, uh, who may have forgotten. My favorite fighters um, of all time, honorable mention in my favorite fighters are Iran Barkley, Tony Bellew, Vasilo Machenko, James Tony, and Timothy Bradley. My top 10, concrete top 10 favorite fighters are Sergey Kovalev, Larry Holmes, Muhammad Ali, Bernard Hopkins, Adrian Granados, Michael Nunn, Manny Pacquiao, Riddick Bowe, Evander Holyfield, and Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. So that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, who are your top 10 fair fighters of all time? Do we have any fair fighters in common? Let me know in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. And like I always say in every video, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. And that's Daniel in South Florida, if you didn't know. So get your geography up if you didn't know. And until next time, take care, guys.